Hey guys, welcome back to Line Defense's video blog. I'm Corey. And I'm Charlie. So it's been a while since we posted a video. We do apologize about that. We yeah. have been mad busy. Uh, this wall was empty last video and now I've got all kinds of guns. So we've had a few video reviewers do some reviews on our products recently that we've just Absolutely. been randomly finding here and there. So thank you guys to, uh, to those that have been giving us some props and uh, we'll put a little linksy up there for you in that box right there so you can see the other videos. And I think there's a couple other videos that uh, were done as well. <laughs> so, let's get on to, uh, to our area of, of focus today. Uh, we're going to talk about holsters today. I thought that would be fitting uh, to do uh, a video on since uh, it's kind of what we are in the business of. So I'm going to cover what you want to look for in a holster. Basically what makes, uh, what makes a good holster. Um, I probably will touch some on what doesn't make a good holster just naturally. And then Corey's going to cover that in more detail. One of the first things you want to look for is, uh, in my opinion, you want to have a, a roll bottom. Um, so you don't want the barrel sticking out the bottom of the holster, so you can see there's no barrel sticking out the bottom of this holster. Um, but at the same time, you don't want to have the entire bottom covered. Um, and there's a couple of reasons. One is you want that rolled bottom so that if you sit down um, in a chair that has an arm or next to a table or something, you can't bump that gun out of the holster. Um, so if the barrel is sticking out underneath, um, or it was just an open, completely open bottom, you could bump that gun out. And uh, that's, that's a bad deal. You're sitting in a restaurant, you sit down in your chair, and pop, your gun falls out on the floor. Um, the reason you don't want it completely closed is so that if you are firing and a shell happens to find its way in there, it can hopefully clear its way out through the bottom of the holster. And uh, you'll be able to reholster your weapon if uh, the situation calls for that. You want to look for a good fit. Um, you know, we've all ran across, uh, I think the first holster I ever owned when I was like 13, my dad bought me a 22, um, a Ruger 22 pistol, and I had to have a holster. So I went out and bought an Uncle Tom's nylon sleeve holster. So obviously, far extreme of that is what you want to be. Um, you want a good fit. You want something that's got good retention. Um, you know, you want to typically on an outside the waist belt holster, you want to be able to hold it upside down, do a little shake without anything coming out, but then you still want to be able to, you know, draw the weapon when the need arises. It's a little bit different for inside the waist belt holsters because you're putting a belt over that holster, which is increasing the retention. And you also just got the pressure of your clothes and stuff like that um, pushing against it. So you're going to want a little bit less retention, especially with Kydex, or there's a good chance that... Uh, you actually won't be able to get the weapon out once you put your belt over it. Mm -hmm. But still, you should be able to hold it upside down without it falling out. Obviously, you want something that's comfortable. Um, that's why I like to keep everything as small as possible. Um, because normally, small equals comfort within reason. And uh, I think that's about all I had to cover on that subject. Yeah, absolutely. There are some injection molded companies out there that uh, make you know, machine made, you know, large scale holster manufacturing companies. And, and some of them have a button on there. Uh, I'm not personally a big fan of a button. I know Charlie is not as well. There's uh, there's there's a lot of risk involved. Uh, you can have um, holster error to where the button is pressed in. That can cause uh, you know the trigger to be engaged. And then there's also if you have bad trigger control when you pull it out, you know you hit that button. You can also because you're you're trying to push the button to get the holster or the gun out, and then you can push the, the trigger in. So not a big fan of button retention. Also not a big fan of the leather and the Kydex hybrids or the leather and the plastic hybrids. The leather is, it's a skin, you know, it moves and it bends and it stretches and plastic doesn't. I mean, it stays its shape and its size. Leather also absorbs moisture, you know, as the skin is supposed to. And so if you're sweating a bunch or you're in the rain, you know, if you're a cop on duty and you have a, you know, you're out in the rain or something like that, a patrol officer, that, that water can, can sit against the gun for longer periods of time and cause rust or damage, uh, corrosion, things like that. Um, and then as the leather stretches, it'll lose that retention, but the plastic will stay the same. So your whole holster just loses retention because half of it is doing something different than the other half is doing. So not a big fan of that either. Yeah, another thing on the leather inside the waist belt is it'll collapse. Yeah. And then you can't, you know, you're sitting there trying to pull it open, it open. Uh, with yep. your finger while you holster yep. the weapon. And that kind of brings us to the next point of why we use a company called Kydex. Uh, Kydex LLC for our thermoform plastics. There's some other brands out there. Kydex has the the best reviews um, all around. Uh, everybody's like, we want a Kydex holster. Um, 
So we use it because we can, we can mold and we can press just about anything that uh, the imagination will come up with and it allows us to do uh, quite a few things. Um, we've chosen to go with the um, 0 .08 thickness kydex, uh, 8 hundredths of an inch as opposed to the 6 hundredths of an inch kydex. Uh, it gives us still nice, you know, pretty lines, pretty definition, um, but it's not really floppy and it doesn't break down and, uh, and melt as easily. So when we ship to Afghanistan or Iraq or places that are really hot desert situations, the six will will melt. You know, if it's in a truck dashboard or something like that, where it can get up to a couple hundred degrees, oftentimes in those Hummers and things. Yeah. Um, where the eight, you know, it needs to be 325 or above really for it to start to uh, to fail on that note. Um, we also have a lifetime warranty on all of our products. Sure do. So anything that uh, that you do to it, we'll fix. If it comes back with a bunch of bullet holes in it, we're going to send you a paper target, though. So yes. Why don't you talk a little bit about uh, some of our hero products, Charlie? Yeah. My personal favorite product that we have, um, you know, I, I'm a civilian, so I can seal almost all the time. Personal favorite product is uh, the appendix carry. And this is actually an appendix carry holster that I have been using for about a year now. We've changed some things about what we do, but it's such a good... Um, idea and the holster itself, appendix carrying, I like it so much I've just stuck with it even though yeah. we've changed some simple things about it. You know, it basically it doesn't add anything to the gun. You know, we all have a, a kind of a, a natural cavity, kind of where your hip rotates and stuff like that. If you can stick that gun in that area in your waistband and be comfortable with that, mm -hmm. you're going to like this holster. It's just going to give you the security of covering your trigger. Obviously, we're adding safety there. It's going to keep the gun from falling just down your leg into your pants. And then it just protects you from the gun. You know, I've got a lot of stippling on uh, on my Glock here. And even just the, the control mechanisms on the Glock. You know, 1911s get even worse. It's just nice to have that mm -hmm. smooth Kydex um, in between you and the gun. I've been wearing mm -hmm. mine uh, right behind the hip at 4 o'clock. You know, Absolutely. It, it's not as comfortable as another product that you're going to um, show here in a minute, but uh, it's actually been a lot more comfortable than I thought it would be. You know, it yeah. doesn't take up as much surface space, um, but it's actually been pretty comfortable, and you can kind of cant it how you want to. Yeah, I mean, that is that is the reason, besides all the reasons I like appendix carry, um, that I go with this holster. I can go strong side hip with that if I want. I can go back um, of the hip if I want. Um, it, it has one point of contact with the belt, so you can play with... Uh, the cant yeah, yeah. Um, you can play with the cant um, you know and I'll do that constantly throughout the day just keeping things comfortable yeah. um, so that that's my personal favorite on our other inside the waist belt holster um, you guys will recognize this as a little bit more of a classic looking um, it's got a smooth back two points of retention this one is sitting at uh, zero degree cant um, a lot of times you know you would have about a 15 degree cant built into this and this really because it is curved is really going to be if you're going to only carry like straight on the hip or just back of the hip, this would be the way you want to go because it will be slightly more comfortable. Um, it's, you know, your hip is kind of a, a pressure point. You know, everything wants to dig into you there. Um, so the curve kind of helps to make that a little bit more comfortable. But the downside of this holster is you can't wear it up front because of the curve. You know, you're flat in the front, um, the same as small the back. Now, a cool thing about the way that we make our, uh, we call it our IWB, our Inside the Waistband Holster. Um, Charlie and I, back in the day, we, we kind of collaborated to come up with a smooth back process. Um, that's as technical of a term as we've come up with so far. Yeah. To where, you know, it, the most of the press is on the front as opposed to meeting in the middle, kind of 50-50 style. And that allows it to be comfortable, allows it to sit nice up and close to the skin without having to have all these extra cavity gaps that can't get up to your skin. Um, so it's less print, it's more comfortable. And it's still just as stable, and it's something that we haven't seen anybody else do yet. So yeah, so far it's uh, it's really unique. And you know, one of the things I touched on on what makes a good holster, in my opinion, is a, a small as possible, so functional. Yeah. And if you notice, I don't want to pick on anybody in particular, but you know, you'll see some holsters where they get just massive like this, and they're doing that because they want to spread the weight of the gun out and so forth. Um, but I just find having my entire right side of my body just covered in a holster, yeah. this isn't comfortable. Um, so that's one of the reasons we keep this guy. Um, at that size. The next holster I'll cover is just our basic outside the waistband holster. Um, we call this the Rhino. Um, so this holster has um, a really interesting retention for a Kydex holster. A lot of Kydex holsters, you guys that have ran Kydex before, you know how with the Kydex it's got that that pop, that quick retention where you break that initial retention and then it's just loose, it's out of there. We do offer holsters like that. Mm -hmm. This particular holster is different in that the retention is basically a lot longer. Like if you look here, I've got this gun not even about halfway in and I've got retention. Um, 
So it's not so much that I can't, you know, overcome the retention easily, um, you know, it's so fast, but if I happen to, you know, throw myself on the ground to go prone, shoot in a car or something, I jump over something and I bump that gun a little bit out of that initial retention, I'm not going to lose it. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of a, a holster that I like to run on uh, like a tack vest or a war belt or if I'm running, uh, you know, some kind of competition or I'm just, I'm moving around a lot where the quick, super fast speed that you might be looking for in just a speed competition. Yeah. An issue. Let me show off a little bit of the style that you came up with here, if I could. Typically you see like a high sweat guard coming all the way to the back or you got a low or no sweat guard on the back. Well, this way you could say is a medium and it's also got the same on the front too. Now it's not really a sweat guard per se on the front, you know, because it's not guarding against sweat, but it's uh, it meets in the middle both sides and you can see uh, that it kind of looks cool. Um, which is where the rhino came yeah. from. Moving on here quickly, uh, we have you know the classic single mag um, holder. And uh, really the one thing that makes our mag holders unique, whether it's on pistol or rifle, yeah. which I don't have any rifle stuff out here, is that we have a, um, a flared mag uh, holder, basically. And the idea of this came from uh, using a, a pistol that had a flared mag well. And how easy that is and quick that is. Everybody, you know, has probably used one of those before and just knows how quick your reloads are. And uh, one of the things I noticed was when you go to retain a mag, maybe you just do, uh, you know, an admin reload. You have a moment where you can, you know, put a new mag in that's full. I mean, you want to retain that mag. A lot of times, because the kydex fits so closely and it's such a small hole, you have to kind of take a glance down and you take your eyes off of whatever's going on in yeah. front of you. So by just giving a, I don't know if you guys can see it on the video, if you look at some pictures on our website, you can definitely see it. Just a slight, a slight, uh, you know, larger opening there at the top. It allows you basically to have a little bit of space there where you have a bigger hole to find and it funnels it in. Yeah. Um, so you have that quick acquisition um, on the mag. And then, you know, we go from singles to doubles, um, you know, we got the double pistol. You can do uh, you know, our LMD, which is a pistol and a light. Um, and then anything that goes beyond a single mag always has a retention screw. So you can go from sloppy, where if you hold it upside down, it'll fall out, to so tight that you actually can't remove the mag, which obviously you, know, you wouldn't want. But you can go anywhere in between yeah. those variants, so it's very adjustable. Something else that's uh, unique to us uh, so far is that uh, none of them really go above three inches. These are all about two and three quarters to three inches in height maximum. So when it's when it's on your belt and you you know you go prone or you kneel or anything, your leg doesn't get in the way. Yeah. And then all of our our screw holes, they're all um, three quarters of an inch on center. And so they'll match up with uh, a malice clip or you know something if you want to use on molly webbing or pals webbing. And then they also all can go together. So you can take off these back loops and you can link these together. So you'd have uh, a double mag and then a light right there. So absolutely a little bit a uh, little bit modular. Little news from the front now. Um, we're in some retail stores. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, we got some products here to show you guys. For you. Got, uh, got some simple product packaging, and I'm sure that uh, it'll change as time goes on. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, UPCs now, so we got some SKUs on the back that oh, yeah. uh, companies can barcode scan. They can put absolutely. in their system. Well, we have our main hero products. So we've got the inside the waistband here. Um, we've got our X clip, which we can talk about in another video. We've got our outside the waistband, and then we've got our APX, our appendix carry inside the waistband. So those have been a pretty big hit so far, especially yeah. the uh, the concealment um, and the tactical line. We're also growing from here. So yeah, and you know if any retailers see this, um, you know if you want anything beyond that, obviously you know you could talk to us, um, give us a call. I'm sure you can find our number somewhere, uh, our website obviously, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're we're ready to go with this thing. We are. So. Um, yeah, enjoy. Hope you guys have a great day. Stay vigilant and stay safe. See you next time. Um, we've got a couple of video reviews out there that other people have done to us that uh, we've just been finding here and there, which has been kind of cool. They've done it to us? <laughs> They've done to us. They have done the video blog review to uh. us.